There's often a je ne sais quoi about drinking a cocktail in a bar as opposed to at home. And while it's probably partly just because someone else is making it for you and doing the washing up afterwards, another educated guess would be that they've added some bitters. While many cocktail recipes actually call for bitters, a lot that don't still benefit from a dash or two. Bitters add a depth and length to a cocktail, so if you can imagine an old-fashioned without the Angostura, it would be too sweet, of course, but also just be plain boring and you'd probably kind of forget about it as soon as you'd swallowed. Bitters just really help the delicious flavours from other ingredients linger, and that's what makes an unforgettable cocktail. The term bitters covers a wide range of products. They're made by infusing aromatics like fruit and barks in neutral alcohol to produce a really strong flavouring. They were originally marketed for medicinal purposes and so traditional bitters like Angostura and Peychaud's will contain lots of barks and herbs with alleged curative properties. They then made the jump into the bar and since bartenders love their rather more easily proven flavour enhancing properties, many which are a bit more tailored to cocktails have also hit the market, so something like the Mr. Bitters Pink Grapefruit and Agave is clearly meant to go in a tequila or mezcal cocktail. Bitters are extremely strongly flavoured, you only ever need a few drops and I would always recommend having a taste before chucking one that you haven't used before in a drink because they can completely overwhelm or unbalance. Contrary to popular belief, bitters are actually alcoholic, it's just that you use them in such small quantities that they generally have minimal effect on the alcohol content of a drink. Woodier, spicier bitters like Angostura and Peychaud's are great for bringing those same flavours out in darker spirits, which is what you see using them in something like a Manhattan or a Sazerac. And then I use citrus-based bitters to brighten a drink that I feel is a little bit flat. So orange bitters in a whiskey sour is a favourite trick of mine, or grapefruit bitters in a Paloma, even celery bitters in a Bloody Mary just to lengthen out that savoury flavour. They can also be really visually appealing if you add a float of bitters to a Collins style drink or get all Jackson Pollock and dash them across the egg white foam on your Pisco Sour. Except for a few occasions, the Trinidad Sour being the obvious one, bitters are really meant to be the supporting act and not the star of the show. So figure out what flavours you're trying to enhance in the cocktail or a certain spirit that you're using and go from there. So one of my favourites is the Aphrodite bitters from Dr. Adam Elmagrab. They that has ginger, um, cacao and uh, some coffee. So it kind of works well with whiskey and rum. Brings out those kind of spicier notes or something like the toasted pecan, of course, is going to work if you think that something has a really lovely warm nuttiness to it. If this is the kind of bar information that you're always looking for, then take a look at our bartending course collaboration with International Open Academy, where I include many hints and tips to elevate your cocktails. The link in the description will give you the best deal currently on offer. So there you have it. A very succinct, at least for me, introduction to bitters. So now you know.